It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Sportsnet LA presents the Dodgers as they take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Thursday evening to you, wherever you are. Dodgers home now to begin a homestand, having done well on the recent road trip, winning four out of six, now going up against a very hungry St. Louis Cardinal ball club. The Cardinals four and a half games behind Milwaukee, but they're playing well. They've won eight of the last 12 on the road, and for that matter, come into this game having won nine of 13, just like the Dodgers, who are doing well on the road, having won four out of six, and Recently at home, Dodgers learning how to win at Dodgers Stadium. They were five and one. As far as the pitching is concerned, Adam Wainwright will be on the mound for St. Louis. Wainwright about as good as there is. He is 10 and three, four times in his career. He's won in double figures before the All-Star game. In fact, he's won 107 games for the Cardinals. He's number eight on their all-time list. One other note, he finished second last year in the Cy Young Award, and that went to Clayton Kershaw. On the mound for the Dodgers, it'll be Josh Beckett with a record of five and four, two and two lifetime against St. Louis, and Beckett in his last six starts, a brilliant earned run average, 1.5. Those are the numbers. Pull up a chair. We'll be back with the ball game and a whole lot more right after this. Baseball as fans make their way in. 
into Dodger Stadium. Certainly happy to have the team back at Chavez Ravine after a successful 4-2 and two road trip entering here for game one of a four-game set with the St. Louis Cardinals. Welcome inside Dodger Stadium, everybody. I'm Alana Rizzo, and certainly when you think of the St. Louis Cardinals, you have to think of their backstop, Yadier Molina. Tremendous behind the plate. He's having a good year offensively as well. A 284 average, six home runs, and 27 RBIs so far in 2014, but it's what he does behind the plate that makes him so effective. Thrown out 45% of base runners this season. That leads all of baseball. He's won six consecutive Gold Glove Awards, so certainly has the hands. Five straight National League All-Star appearances, but here's the kicker. Los Angeles has 81 steals this season. That leads all of Major League Baseball, so something is going to give, specifically with D. Gordon, the speedy leadoff man for the Dodgers. After the break, the legendary Vince Scully on the call. Stay with us. You may be welcome to Dodger Stadium. We're all looking forward to this series. The Dodgers and the Cardinals in a four game series. And of course both teams come in with good records. The Cardinals are slow in gathering their four and a half behind Milwaukee. But they've also had some injured pitchers. That means Shelby Miller, Michael Waka, Joe Kelly, Jaime Garcia. They've all had one problem or another, although they tell me that Shelby Miller might very well pitch on Sunday, but we'll have to wait and see. The birds, however, have improved. They were barely 500 on the road. They've won eight of the last 12. They've won nine of 12. In fact, you can see the ball club getting better all the time. They've won four out of five as well. So the Cardinals arrive against the Dodger team that has shown some success at home. The last homestand, remember, the Dodgers won five out of six. Let's take a look at the birds now and take a look at Mike Matheny's lineup on his card. Matt Carpenter at third base and Matt Holliday in left field. Matt Adams at first, Johnny Peralta at short, Yadier Molina behind the plate, Alan Craig in right field, John Jay in center, former Dodger Mark Ellis. Welcome back, Mark. He's at second base and one of the best Cardinal pitchers in history, Adam Wainwright on the mound. On the mound for the Dodgers, Josh Beckett, a record of five and four, two and two lifetime against the Cardinals. It's interesting in his last six starts, 
He has a dazzling earned run average of 1.58. However, the old question on Broadway, how did he come out? Three wins and three losses. The Cardinals, of course, beating the Dodgers in six games in the LCS, only to go on and lose in the World Series to the Boston Red Sox. And for the Cardinals, a couple of things about them. They score runs with two outs. They do not strike out. They're productive with their outs. They hit an awful lot of line drives, and they put a lot of runners on base. As you look at Yadier Molina, we tell you what they struggle with. They lack home run power. They don't steal bases. They hit into a lot of double plays. So those are a couple of the positives and negatives. And now it will be Matt Carpenter to start it off. Matt Carpenter takes a lot of strikes in the leadoff role, and he starts out by taking a breaking ball strike. He has a lot of RBIs for a guy in the leadoff role. 30 runs batted in. Now the left-hand hitter looks at the next one, and it's another strike. But again, it's all typical of Matt Carpenter. By the way, Matt Carpenter, when Clayton Kershaw pitches and Carpenter bats against him, that's going to bring back the memory of one of the most exciting at bats in MLCS history. Carpenter takes off the play one and two. I'm not sure if you remember. Carpenter had 11 pitches in the at bat in a scoreless game and doubled against Kershaw. He hits one off speed foul down the left field line and the count one and two. And on the 11th pitch. Carpenter double to right against Kershaw and before the inning ended the Cardinals scored four and they went on to a big win but everybody watching that game and even now remember Carpenter's at bat and he grounds one up the middle so he starts off with a base hit against Josh Beckett that will bring up Holiday Adams and Peralta we'll take a look at the Dodgers with the leather no surprises but one welcome home Gonzalez and Gordon Rojas and Uribe Juan is back Kemp and left Ethier in center Puig in right and Duterra handling Beckett so Juan Uribe who did his homework worked hard in rehab and he's finally back in his familiar position at third base with a runner at first Matt Holliday in his career hitting 329 against the Dodgers he's always done well right hand batter grounds one foul outside a third down the line I was just going to tell you 43 percent of the time Holiday will swing at the first pitch he is also the number one man even though he has only five home runs Mike Matheny will allow Holiday to swing on a three and oh pitch more than just about anybody else in the lineup even with two strikes Holiday's a very tough hitter he's got 22 walks with two strikes on him and he not only swings at the first pitch 20 of his hits first pitch so the strike one pitch to Matt Holiday fouled at the plate 0 and 2 of course I guess we'll never be able to look at Matt Holiday without remembering when he played for Colorado and he hit a home run to the back wall of the Dodger bullpen right where the three sisters were looming looking down long before the restaurant and the other area a monstrous home run I think it was 481 meanwhile he's up there now out of a stretch goes Beckett the right handed deals fastball sprayed foul down the right field line no balls and two strikes they count to Matt Holliday last year one of the big reasons why the Cardinals were as powerful as they were as a team with runners in scoring position the Cardinals hit 330 that's the best average in five decades this year they've come back to earth they're hitting 250 strike two pitch on the way is low ball one one and two we told you that the Cardinals do not steal a lot of bases a grand total of 30 and of course D Gordon has 40 all by himself and Mike Matheny sometime don't let me miss forgetting to tell you about the bird poop that's a promise okay the throw to first not in time Carpenter diving back he has two stolen bases in fact 
the one man who does the running for the Cardinals is Kelton Wong. He's nine out of ten, but he's not playing tonight. One and two the count to Matt Holiday. Beckett set, checking first at Carpenter takes his lead. Josh very deliberate and so deliberate time called at the plate. So one ball and two strikes the count. The holiday in and out of the box. Matt with five home runs, 39 runs batted in. Beckett looks in getting a sign. Carpenter held on by Adrian Gonzalez. Outfield deep straight away. And the one two pitch on the way. Big chopper up the middle. Here comes that double play they hit into. That is the 72nd double play the Cardinals have into this year. 72. For Matt Holiday, by the way, that would be the 10th. There's three Cardinals who have grounded into 10 double plays. So that's a flaw in their lineup, and sure enough, it pops up here in the first inning. A routine double play. 63 and with two out Matt Adams coming up. Matt Adams left hand batter five home runs in the month of June and takes ball one Matt for the year nine home runs 33 runs batted in and hitting 328. He is an extra base hitter for sure the 1 0 pitch on the way change in for a strike. He has 17 doubles, three triples, and nine home runs. So about 11% of the time, he'll come up with an extra base hit. 1-1 one, one pitch is swung on and missed, one and two. And by the way, the big man, and he is big, has hit five of his nine home runs this month. Adams is 6'3 and at least 230. Went to school at Slippery Rock University. And the 1 2 pitch is foul back. For Adams, played part time at catcher and first base. He was a rock in college. He hit 487, 438 his sophomore year. But it took the 23rd round before the Cardinals selected him. 1 2 pitch waved at that changeup and missed. So a single, a double play, and a strikeout. And it is time for Adam Wainwright. The Cardinals go down in order, and the Dodgers coming up. Carpenter single holiday hit into a double play Adams struck out now it's time for the Dodger lineup and that means D Gordon followed by Yasiel Puig and Adrian Gonzalez Matt Kemp hits fourth with Andre Ethier behind him and then Juan Uribe at third base Drew Butera hitting seventh behind the plate Miguel Rojas at short and Josh Beckett on the mound. On the mound, one of the very, very good ones by the name of Adam Wainwright. 
He's a big drink of water, six feet seven, 225 pounds. He comes in with a record of 10 and three. He has won three in a row. He is one and two here at Dodger Stadium in his career. Adams' first pitch is low ball one, one and oh. Before we get into particulars about him, some of the baseball notes. Number one, if you take the first pitch, the result usually is a 176 batting average. So they count on Gordon now. He has taken two, and it's a one ball, one strike count. His team, Wainwright's team, wins 80% of the games he starts this year. They've won 12 of his 15. The fastball a little high, ball two, two and one. Six of his 10 victories on the road. The so-called quality start, 12 out of 15. That would be 80% of his starts this year. Gordon coming off a big game when he had four hits in Kansas City. And the 2-1 pitch on the way, off the plate, ball three. What would be very interesting, should Gordon get aboard, the battery of Wainwright and Molina has been downright terrific against base dealers. In Wainwright's career, only 57% of base runners have stolen a base. 3-1 pitch is taken for a strike. This year, there have only been four runners trying to run on the combination of Wainwright and Molina and two stolen bases and two caught. So if Gordon gets aboard, he is faced with a formidable duo. Now the 3-2 pitch from Adam Wainwright as he works from the first base side of the rubber, and it's a little high, so we're going to see the confrontation. Gordon is aboard, and now the batters will have Puig, Gonzalez, and Kemp. We'll take a look at the Cardinals defensively with Adams and Ellis, Peralta, and Carpenter, Holiday, Jay, and Craig in the outfield, and Molina behind the plate. Dodgers coming home with a little two game winning streak. They've also won nine of the last 12. They are three games behind the Giants who are hosting San Francisco. That game about ready to get underway probably has. Dodgers were nine games back on June 8th and now they trail San Francisco by three. But here's an interesting battle as Puig checks in and takes ball one. So Wainwright walks Gordon, and now you have that great combination, Wainwright and Molina against Gordon. D looks across the diamond over at third base coach Lorenzo Bundy. Meanwhile, Molina looks at his manager, Mike Matheny, who was a brilliant catcher in his day, to see if they want to pitch out. Gordon off the bag, Wainwright checking, still checking. Gordon bluffs and a wave by Puig, not a swing. Badly fooled, and they count one and one. Yasiel Puig certainly doing his job to contribute to the Dodgers' success. And, of course, D. Gordon has really been driving pitchers to a distraction ever since he got back here to play second base. So Wainwright looks in, getting a sign. Molina sets the target. Off the bag at first is Gordon. Wainwright set at the belt. Gordon not going, and the pitch almost hits Puig on the leg, and the count two balls and one strike. <laughs> Bottom of the first inning, no score. One other thing that Gordon has to worry about, especially with a left hand hitter at the plate, and that would be Yadier Molina's pickoffs. I mean, he's got a great arm, and he has picked off 42 runners. I'm sure most of the time, when he's using a left hand hitter as a screen. Here's the 2 1 pitch to Puig. Gordon's not going and it's low and inside. So Wainwright struggling a wee bit. Walk Gordon and is now fallen behind 3 and 1 to Yachiel Puig. So Puig in and out of the box. Three balls, one strike. Molina in a crouch Gordon off the bag held on by Adams again Wainwright set at the belt another look over his left shoulder Gordon not going and the pitch is lifted to right center very playable Craig and Jay and it's John Jay the center fielder so holding at first is Gordon. 
the Yossi Okwe flies to center, one down, and Adrian Gonzalez the batter. Adrian Gonzalez hitting 253, 13 home runs, 48 runs batted in. Adrian has an RBI in each of his last seven games. Actually, he's had eight RBIs over the seven. Now, this is the time when Gordon has to be very careful, as we said. The catcher, Yadier Molina, is terrific in picking off runners. He has picked off 42 in his career, and I'm sure a lot of them is with a left-hand hitter up there as a screen. So Gordon takes his lead. Cardinals load up the right side of the infield. Matt Carpenter, the third baseman, is at short. And the first pitch in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. So we're just starting bottom of the first inning no score. It is just the beginning of what should be a wonderful four game series. Beautiful weather 72 degrees as the game starts. Carpenter wide up third the check swing by Gonzalez it's very high and away one and one to count. Of course, I always like to use any excuse I can to talk about American heroes. And anytime Adam Wainwright pitches, we think of one of the great generals in the Army, Jonathan Mayhew Wainwright the fourth. Throw to first, Gordon steps back on the bag. One ball, one strike to count. Wainwright looking down the barrel getting a sign from Molina. Gordon very cautious increases the lead by a step and there he goes and the pitch is hit in the air to left field starting back as holiday and Matt goes to his left and makes the catch and Gordon returns. So Adrian Gonzalez fly ball to left field Gordon returns now with two out you would think maybe Gordon would try to steal. It remains to be seen as Matt Kemp checks in. Matt Kemp swinging the bat very well of late, though he is elevated into the number four slot. Matt hitting 270, eight home runs, 29 runs batted in. Kemp is hitting over 300, 303 against right handers, all eight home runs against right handers. Since June 6th, Kemp has batted 358. So Gordon off the bag. We'll see if he tries to increase his lead as he did just a moment ago. Draws a throw, and Wainwright drives him back. So Gordon trying to give the Dodgers an edge, trying to get something going against one of the toughest running combinations in the game. Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina. A look by Wainwright. Gordon's not going. Kemp hits one right out of leaping second baseman Mark Ellis. Not hit that hard, but to describe the trajectory. And no runs, no hits, a man left. And at the end of an inning, no score.
score in the ball game. The Dodgers and the Cardinals, a battle with Josh Beckett going against Adam Wainwright. Beckett has really turned things around. First 15 starts, two and eight. And the last 14 starts, five, four. He's cut his ERA in half. And as we mentioned, the last six starts, an earned run average of one and a half. He's working on Johnny Peralta. And when you first look at Johnny Peralta, you think somebody misled and misspelled his first name. It's not J-O-H-N-N-Y. It's J-H-O-N-N-Y. He takes an off-speed pitch for a ball, then a breaking ball for a strike. And Peralta up there, one ball and one strike. We told you that the Cardinals ground into a lot of double plays, 72. Peralta, Alan Craig, and Matt Holliday have each grounded in 10. And he is way out in front of a change. And they count one and two. Peralta gets a lot of hits going after the first pitch. Peralta will be followed by Yadier Molina and then Alan Craig. Peralta also has eight home runs on the road. John has a look at a pitch low. And they count two balls and two strikes. Peralta right hand batter. Beckett into the windup and the pitch is probably banged into center field for a base hit. But Johnny Peralta, his first year with the Cardinals after a long and lengthy career with the Indians and the Tigers, and he opens up with a base hit here in the second inning. So a dangerous way to pitch, allowing the leadoff man to get on. The Dodgers had Gordon get on. The Cardinals had Carpenter open the game with getting on. And now Peralta. And here is the great and he is great, Yadier Molina. Molina is known for a lot of things, including fouling pitches off. Whoops, he just fouled a pitch off. Oh, and one to count. Another thing about him, he does not strike out. According to his plate appearances, you look it up and he's struck out maybe 12% of the time. So Molina, whose older brother Benji has been a hitting coach, for the Cardinals. Yadier waiting right hand batter Beckett right back and a fastball hit to straightaway center going back a bit as Ethier makes the catch still on the grass and Peralta returns to first base. Right fielder, number 21, Alan Craig. Interesting now Carpenter's base hit in the first inning Peralta's base hit in the second inning each came on a one ball two strike count. So we'll see what kind of a pattern that might be as Alan Craig checks in. Craig was a tower of strength for the Cardinals last year. Whenever they needed that big hit, he was the guy. Off to somewhat of a slow start right now, hitting 259, but as usual, 40 runs batted in. Right hand hitter playing right field. Out of a stretch goes Beckett and decides to back off the rubber. Alan Craig was born in Mission Viejo, went to the University of California, Berkeley. Originally signed by the Cardinals back in 2006. The first pitch to him, a little breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. Craig, last year, in talking about what a valuable man he was, he had 97 runs batted in. That's for the year. Strike one pitch on the way to Allen. Here comes a fastball swung on and missed. Fastball from Beckett means like 86. Craig is certainly big enough, 6'2, 210. It'll be 30 the middle of July. In the 2011 World Series over Texas, Craig homered three times. And the Cardinals winning all three of the games. 0 oh, and 2 the count to Allen. Beckett very careful. Back he comes off speed. That's fouled away. And the count remains. No balls and two strikes. Last year, Craig missed a point with runners in scoring position. He was batting 387 with two outs and runners in scoring position. He was hitting 293. With nobody out or one out, he was hitting 500. Now that's the kind of a hitter he is. He has John Jay hitting after him. 
One out, second inning, no score. Peralta off first, draws a throw, scrambles back to the bag. Josh Beckett trying to win his sixth. He's five and four. Adam Wainwright is ten and three. Beckett looks in. Craig waits. And the strike two pitch coming up. Beckett very deliberate as usual slides it down and away for a ball. One and two the count. A couple of Craig's home runs this year have come on three and two counts. And he is very much of a fly ball hitter. Averaging 1.7 in the on the ground as opposed to one in the air. So Craig waiting. One reason I guess why he is grounded into 10 double plays. So many ground balls. One two pitch coming up to the right hand batter. Beckett deals and drops it low and inside. Two balls and two strikes. He's living in the neighborhood of the 70s with an occasional 86 mile an hour fastball. Alan Craig backs out just looking out at Beckett. Craig first came up to the Cardinals four years ago. And pretty much to stay three years ago. Two balls and two strikes the count. Craig is a very aggressive hitter. He has never walked a lot at all. 119 games two years ago. He walked 37. So he's up there to swing. 2-2 two -two pitch swung on and fouled away. To follow that thought. Last year. He had over 500 at bats. He walked 40 times. But for the first and only time in his career. That includes the minor leagues. He struck out 100 times. Craig right now. Has struck out 60. So Allen backs out now slowly getting back in. One out second inning no score. Johnny Peralta over there at first base. Peralta does not run much. One stolen base. One caught stealing. Beckett again ready and delivers. Craig goes up on his toes to look at the pitch down and away. Three and two the count. Well one thing we know about Allen Craig. Two of his home runs. Two of his six. Have come on a three and two count. Waiting on deck, hitting behind him, John Jay. Three and two. The question, of course, is Peralta. Is he going to go? Craig waits. Beckett will make him wait. Peralta off the bag. Johnny is going. Craig swings. Slow ground ball wide of third. Uribe guns it to first for the out. So because they hit into so many double plays they were running Peralta who is not a base dealer Craig grounds into double plays he's a ground ball hitter so Matheny made the good play ran Peralta and not only avoided the double play but he has a runner at second base and the batter is John Jay. Oh yeah I remind me now I told you about the the bird poop yeah it all had to do with the Cardinal manager Mike Matheny. Two down. Here's Jay left hand batter. Beckett ready and delivers. John swings flares one to left coming up making the catch and fighting the glare is Kemp. No runs one hit a man left. I knew it. Good. We'll tell you about the bird poop as we go to the bottom of the second inning. No score.
second inning, no score, and the subject is Mike Matheny. Matheny, 44 years old, come the end of September, born in Ohio, lives in Missouri. But he was not even 18 years old, and he came to the University of Michigan with a major league dilemma. Earlier that summer, the Toronto Blue Jays had drafted a catching prospect in the 31st round, but Matheny decided to honor his college commitments, but he had a lot of doubts. Getting drafted was a dream come true, and if he waited till later on, the next time the offer would be less or not forthcoming at all. So he was a young man, not 18, and a lot of pressure. Should I turn pro or go to college? Here's Andre Ethier. And he takes a pitch low ball one one and oh major league baseball rules allow players to sign with teams up until the player officially enters college full time. That's the key full time. The one oh pitched Andre is swung on ground ball leaving first base is Adams covering his Wainwright handling the throw from Mark Ellis and we have one out in the second inning. 4-1 if you're scoring one down and Juan Uribe coming up and he gets a welcome back applause from the crowd. Anyway, Matheny showered, ready to go to class for the first day, walked out of the dormitory, stomach knotted, and a pigeon defecated directly on his head. Now, conventional wisdom would suggest the bird bombing was a sign that he should hit the road. But Matheny had to go back and clean up. The pitch to Uribe a strike 0 and 1 the count. He went back and showered and cleaned up and decided all of a sudden he was at peace. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to go to college. And there was one other thing that happened. The strike one pitch swung on and missed 0 and 2. Matheny went to his first class and when he reached class he noticed a pretty field hockey player named Kristen. And he would marry her and live happily ever after. And that's the story of Mike Matheny and the bird poop. As Uribe hasn't much of a swing as he returns against a great pitcher and strikes out. So two down here in the second inning. Wainwright picks up the K and the batter now is Drew Butera. By the way, in talking about Mike Matheny and Kristen, in 2003, they started the Catch-22 Foundation to help disadvantaged children in the greater St. Louis area. Two years later, the foundation christened the Catch-22 Miracle Field. The first pitch in for a strike. That's a disability-friendly baseball diamond in Chesterfield, Missouri. Mike Matheny, he is quite a man. Strike one pitch off speed and Carpenter slides that thing in there. 0 and 2 the count. Drew Butera hitting 211. Wainwright ready turns on the rubber. Adam delivers swung on and popped in the air back a second base Ellis and Peralta. It's Ellis calling and puts it away. So the Dodgers go quietly in the second inning. No surprise, that's an awfully good pitcher out there. And at the end of two, no score.
score in the ball game, the Dodgers and the Cardinals. Mark Ellis, the second baseman, who played so hard and so well for the Dodgers in 2012 and 2013. This year with the Cardinals, Mark takes a strike and the count on one. Ellis, 37 years old, originally drafted by the Royals, made it to the big leagues with the A's. Line drive, a leaping backhand catch by Miguel Rojas. So Rojas makes a dandy to take a base hit away from Mark Ellis. That is worth an extra look for sure. And a bullet and fully extended Rojas goes up in the air and snatches it for the out. Of course, seeing Rojas reminds us to tell you about Hanley Ramirez. He was examined today. Dr. Elitrash reviewed the MRI on Ramirez's right shoulder. No structural damage found. Ramirez will continue to progress with hitting and throwing. He is listed day to day and will be able to play when the pain subsides. Meanwhile, here is Adam Wainwright. Gives you that big strike zone at six feet seven. Wainwright with the bat is hitting 290. He has nine hits, two runs batted in. And has struck out about 25% of the time. One ball, one strike count now to Adam. Beckett ready and comes back 1-1, one, one, and that's a strike at the knees. One and two. Vic Carapaza is the plate umpire charged with the responsibility. That would be his fourth year. Somebody might have hollered out of the Cardinal dugout. Carapaza. Looked over there. Now the one two pitch, a comebacker knocked down by Beckett, picks it up and throws him out. So Wayne Wright hits back to the box, two down, and Matt Carpenter coming up. Be sure to bring the kids to Dodgers Stadium Sunday at 110. Dodgers and Cards, first 15,000 kids, 14 and under in attendance, receive an Adrian Gonzalez replica jersey, compliments of Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. For tickets, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions today. Third inning, two out, bases empty. And Matt Carpenter, who led off the ball game with a single in the first inning, up there one for one, hitting 278. Carpenter, left-hand batter, and takes a little low. Ball one, one and oh, the count. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way Carpenter takes a strike to balance things up. No runs two hits for the Cardinals. Nothing across for the Dodgers through two innings. Now the 1 1 pitch on the way fastball swung on and missed at 85 and they count one and two. Of course, if you're looking at a 73 mile an hour changeup, 85 suddenly looks a bit quicker. Carpenter turned to say something to Drew Butera. One and two, the count to Matt. Beckett turns ready, and Josh deals way inside at the kneecaps. Two balls and two strikes to Matt Carpenter. As we told you in his first at bat, Carpenter takes a lot of strikes 43 percent of him in fact a very knowledgeable hitter and the next pitch is whacked down the right field line but hooks foul going into the corner and kicking up into the stands so Matt comes back two balls two strikes I wonder if that did not bring back that moment game six of the NLCS no score Carpenter battling Kershaw and after 11 pitches he lines a double to right two and two the count to Matt the next pitch off speed lifted to left center the outfield is converged Matt Kemp is calling and that'll be that so down go the birds two hits and nothing else and at the end of two and a half innings no score.
Rodgers and the Cardinals. It'll be Rojas, Beckett, and Gordon in that order. A little while ago, I mentioned something I like to do on purpose. We just saluted a member of our armed forces, and I mentioned Adam Wainwright, no relation, but he does bear that great name of General Jonathan Wainwright. During World War II in the Philippines, when Douglas MacArthur was removed, the Battle of Corregidor and eventually the U.S. forces pushed back to Bataan and along with Philippines fought and held the Japanese back. The pit swung on fouled away on one. Eventually the army fell to the hands of the Japanese March of 1942. General Jonathan Wainwright was then sent to a Japanese prisoner of war camp and he stayed there for over three years. And finally, when the United States won World War II over the Japanese, General Wainwright was there on the ship, the Missouri, the peace sign. Then he went back to the Philippines. He got the Congressional Medal of Honor. Ground ball to short. On it easily is Peralta. And that'll do it for Rojas. One away. So anyway, wouldn't want to let the moment pass. The great pitcher name Wainwright, the not the pitcher who is great in his own way in this game of baseball, but a great man, a great American, a lieutenant general in the United States Army, Jonathan Mayway Wainwright the fourth. And Jack Beckett takes a strike, 0 and 1 the count. One down, bottom of the third, no score in the ball game. Wainwright ready in the strike one pitch fastball in there. 0 and 2 the count. I guess it would have been a dream matchup first game of a series Wainwright versus Kershaw. Strike two pitch is low ball one. We told you that Adam Wainwright finished second behind Kershaw for the Cy Young Award last year. The one two pitch strike three called. All Wainwright did last year, he led all National League pitchers in innings pitched, 241. He had five complete games, he had two shutouts, and he wound up 19 and 9. So, two of the really top pitchers in the game, Adam Wainwright and Clayton Kershaw. We're seeing one now, and we'll see the other on Sunday, maybe against Shelby Miller if he's sound enough to pitch. So two out here's D Gordon walked in the first inning made one effort to steal the pitch high ball one but there was a pitch fouled away. Beckett in his three innings has made 42 pitches. And you can see Wainwright has made only 31 now 32. So as Beckett cools off. Wainwright trying to take care of Gordon. Wainwright finished second to Kershaw a couple of years ago he finished third behind Tim Lincecum and Chris Carpenter pitch in the dirt that was 2009 like that was the year Dan Harron finished fifth for Arizona and then in 2010 Wainwright finished second behind only Roy Holiday. He's a marvelous pitcher the two one pitch on the way very high three and one the count. So Adam Wainwright in seven of his 15 starts this year he's not allowed to run. Yasiel Puig on deck. Wainwright 107 wins he's eighth on the all time Cardinal list. Three one pitch in for a strike and they count three and two. Wainwright like so many veterans not only been around he's paid the price. He had Tommy John surgery. In 2011. Here's the 3 2 pitch swung on line foul into the Dodger dugout. It hit the edge of the dugout roof and then kind of disappeared. The Gordon is still there at 3 and 2. There's Beckett standing quietly in the dugout and that ball hit the, the lip of the dugout roof. Oh my God. He said, Yeah, it was close. 
three and two almost make you swallow your gum a little flare going behind the bag is Ellis to pick it off and that'll do it for Gordon that's nine in a row retired by Car uh, by uh, Wainwright he only walked Gordon otherwise he'd be working on a perfecto and at the end of three no score. LA is brought to you by Honda. Start something special with a great deal on a Honda. Now at your Honda dealer. Matt Holliday leading off as we move to the fourth inning. No score. As we mentioned, Holliday swings at the first pitch better than 43% of the time, and he did his first at bat. Fouled it off. So here's Matt. Eventually hit into a double play, fouls the first pitch back. 0 and 1 the count to Matt. Very impressive looking ball player. He's 6'4, about 235. He was a seventh round pick by the Rockies out of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is a state that has certainly produced some very powerful hitters. He takes low. I mean, from Oklahoma, you would start with Mickey Mantle. Will Vestargel, Joe Carter, Johnny Bench, Bob Johnson, Bobby Mercer, Matt Holliday, and Matt Kemp. And Holliday drives one to left center. On his horse is Ethier, and he's there to handle it. So a long fly ball out. One down in the fourth. Coming and the, the battle will be Matt Adams. Matt Adams. So Adams, the big first baseman checking in. We saw a bit of Adams during the LCS, but he was in those days pinch hitting more than anything else. He still wound up doing very well, impressive enough to take over at first base, and he has really found a home. Big left hand batter, as you can see, but he's had a lot of trouble with left hand pitchers. But right handers, he's hitting 367. 2 and 0. Oh. And ball three. So Beckett has allowed two singles, nothing else. Now he's on the edge. 3 and 0 oh to Adams. He looks 3 and 1. Adams 6'3, 230. Born in Pittsburgh. We told you he went to Slippery Rock. And he takes ball four. So Adams draws the walk. And that'll bring up Johnny Peralta. Next, shortstop number 27. Adams is Johnny certainly Peralta. not a big threat to steal. But he does have two. Cardinals are just not a running team. Peralta single to center in the second inning. 
got to second base when Alan Craig grounded out. So John right hand batter. Hits a hopper foul outside of third. It was a change and it was a high change a very very dangerous pitch. And Parala just turned on it too much. Couldn't wait to open up that Christmas package. But jumped on it pulled it foul. Johnny is from Santiago in the Dominican. Another big guy, 6'2, about 215. Now he's in a hole, no balls, and two strikes. Peralta has hit eight of his home runs on the road. He has 11. He has grounded into 10 double plays along with Craig and Holiday. 0 oh and 2 the count. Just missed that inside corner, 1 and 2. Beckett made 42 pitches in the first three innings. That's a nice 14 pitch per inning. One out, one on, no score, fourth inning. Slow breaking ball, hit back barehanded by Beckett, high throw, but Gonzalez stays with it. On the play, Adams advances to second. Betting next, number four, Yadier Molina. So Yadier Molina coming up. Molina fly to center back in the second inning. John 0 for 1. Yadier Molina, he has five gold gloves. He is a remarkable catcher. Cardinals have had something like eight gold gloves for their catchers. Mike Matheny, when he caught, had three. Pitched down and away, ball one, one and zero. Oh. Mike Matheny paid the price. I think this is right. I read it somewhere. I think he suffered 25 concussions as a catcher. 25. And the pain got so bad he just couldn't continue. Finished up his career with the Giants in 2006 after years with the Blue Jays and then the Cardinals. Ball two, two and oh. It was somewhat shocking that the Cardinals would sign Matheny. I mean, he had no experience, none in the minors, nowhere. But the interview was so impressive. And they really picked the right man. When you talk to people who follow this team all year long, it is not the decision making on hit and run, intentional pass. They say his leadership quality is truly remarkable. That's what makes the Cardinals tick. Two out, but there's a note on the Cardinals this year. About 45% of their runs, they score with two out. And that's ball four. So a couple of walks put runners at first and second, and certainly an RBI man coming up, Alan Craig. Right fielder, number 21, Alan Craig. So for Beckett, he has given up two hits. He has walked two, and we're scoreless in the fourth inning. Giants are playing Cincinnati. We'll check on that, let you know. So Beckett deep in thought, and here's Craig. Craig in the past only had three at bats against Beckett, and he was one for three. So two on, two out, no score, fourth inning. Slow breaking ball in there for a strike. Yep, that's his address, 73. However, he's had now to make 18 pitches in the inning, and he's not out of it. Oh and one. 
fastball, but he got it low and got that thing up to 93. Give you an idea of the background of Alan Craig as a hitter. Two years ago, he drove in 92 runs in 119 games. That's the most ever by a Cardinal who played in less than 120 games. Even more than Rogers Hornsby, who played in little more than 107 games and knocked in 83. Of course, when you get your name linked with Hornsby, it was one of the truly great right hand hitters the game has ever known. You're in high style. Alan Cray. Two and one to Allen. Slow breaking ball at 72. Two and two. We mentioned about the 2011 World Series where Craig homered three times. Actually, he had the game winning RBI in three of the four Cardinal victories over Texas. Only two men had ever done that before. Kai Kai Kyler and Hank Greenberg. Two and two the count, two out and two on. So the deuces are out there on the table. And Beckett, very deliberate in time, is called at the plate. Alan Craig, the 30 years old, the 18th of July. He has a degree in social welfare from the University of California, Berkeley. Craig certainly looks in great shape when they first signed him. They wanted him to lose 15 pounds. And he said the first thing I had to do was cut out cheeseburgers. Started ordering a salad. Two and two to Alan Craig. Breaking ball got him, and that'll do it for Craig. So Beckett, pitching so carefully, has struck out two. Cardinals lead two, and at the end of three and a half innings, chasing the breaking ball, down goes Craig, and the birds, no score. Cardinal 7-10 and after the game, fans are invited down to the field. Enjoy a summer country mix themed Friday night fireworks show. Compliments of Denny's. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. Ah, the sisters looking down from behind the rooftop, just beyond the Dodger bullpen, watching Yasiel Pui. Followed by Adrian Gonzalez and then Matt Kemp. By the way, the Reds are up at AT&T Park. They're scoreless in the fourth inning up there. 
Wainwright against Puig. Puig fly to center in the first inning. Oh, and one. If you ask Adam Wainwright, you've been around a long time. Are you superstitious? And he said yes. Oh, and two the count. His superstition, he sleeps in the same shirt the night before he pitches. Said he's been doing that since high school. Oh, and two the count. One and two. Wainwright was born in Brunswick, Georgia. His father, an attorney, his mom, a real estate agent. His older brother, Trey, he said, taught him everything he knows about sports. In fact, they built a pitcher's mound in the backyard. And it was Trey who taught him how to pitch. One and two. Fastball got him. So after all the breaking balls, we Lawrence, a, a long list of hitters mesmerized by Wainwright. And down he goes. Take a look. Fastball right there. That was the last pitch in the world we was expecting. So it wasn't just striking him out. He basically outthought him. It's his second strikeout. And now Adrian Gonzalez, who flied to Matt Holliday in the first inning. And a high fly ball into right center field. Craig and Jay going after it. And Jay picks it off on the run. John Jay running on the track parallel to the wall in right center. A nice defensive play. And we have two down. Take another look. Gonzalez zeroes in on a breaking ball at the knees. Hits it pretty hard, but John Jay just moves over, backhands it. Craig had given him a wide berth. Good play by John. Two down, no score, fourth inning. It should be duly noted as well. Remember, Wainwright opened up the game and walked Gordon. He has gotten everybody since. He's retired 11 in a row. And ball one, one and oh. Matt Kemp, 0 for 1. Hit a soft line drive, if that doesn't sound like an oxymoron. Looped one to Mark Ellis. 0 for 1. Fast ball, hit fair. Nice backhand play by Carpenter to throw him out. So Wainwright. Is throwing strikes that keeps everyone on his toes. He's retired 12 in a row. He is not allowed a hit. And at the end of four, no score.
very slowly building. We don't get too worked up until the seventh inning. However, I mean, Beck is pitching a dandy, no score, but Wainwright, wow. Meanwhile, Mike Matheny, we've talked before about they signed him as a manager without any experience, and the Cardinals interviewed, oh, at least five other candidates, including two-time World Series champion Terry Francona. And, of course, remember, Francona will be here with the Cleveland Indians. So the managers come back to back. So in the fifth inning, John Jay who made that nice catch on the ball hit by Gonzalez, a strike, and he's in a hole 0 and 2. No balls and two strikes, no score, fifth inning. Wainwright made only seven pitches in the fourth inning. So Wainwright's only made 44 pitches. I mean, if he kept that up, he'd go the distance and less than 100 pitches. Two and two the count. Fouled away. John Jay, he'd be followed by Mark Ellis and then Adam Wainwright. Beckett takes plenty of time, very deliberate. Too much so. And the hitters back out. Jay fly to left field 0 for 1 fouled away 2 and 2 the count a glimpse of sunset back of left field kind of a swipe of a sunset cloud 3 and 2 the count it's not as if the wind twisted it it's like the artist just swung the brush on a blue canvas. Gorgeous sight. And the rest of the sky, very blue with tiny shades of pink. Sunset in Los Angeles. Ooh. Brown ball. There's Gordon. There's an out. So one away here in the Second fifth inning. And old pal Mark Ellis coming up. Every time you even think about the accident here at second base, how close Mark came to losing a leg. Such a good guy, 37 years old. He's a marvelous fielder. Slow and a strike, 70. That's uh, as slow as Beckett has thrown so far. When Mark Ellis played for the Dodgers last year, late in April, he had four hits, including two home runs at City Field against the Mets. He became the third second baseman in Dodger history to have a four hit, two home run game. At strike three, Davey Lopes did it. He went five for six at Wrigley. Back in 1974, and Jackie Robinson went four for five with two home runs against the Giants at Evers Field in 1950. So Mark will forever exist in the Dodger record books. So Ellis goes down, and here's Adam Wainwright, not a bad hitting pitcher at all. Ball one. Beckett has three strikeouts. Wainwright hit a home run on the very first pitch he ever saw in the big leagues. Round ball to Uribe. That was May the 24th, 2006. And as the big man slowly walks to the dugout, remember he has six career home runs. And at the end of four and a half, no score.
Join us for a special episode of Backstage Dodgers as we get an inside look at Clayton Kershaw's best pitching performance of his career. Relive the excitement in the new episode of Backstage Dodgers, Sunday at 5 on Sportsnet LA. Looking at the green trees, it almost looked like the sky is on fire. Clayton Kershaw can enjoy the scenery right now. So can Scott Van Slyke. A.J. Ellis will always be found somewhere near Clayton. They'll be in business for sure on Sunday. Meanwhile, for the Dodgers against Wainwright, Ephir, Uribe, and Butera. Interesting that Wainwright, who is a wonderful pitcher and is checking his outfield, staring out at John Jay. He has not done well here in California. Andre Ethier grounded out in the second inning to Mark Ellis. Wainwright, we mentioned at the start of the game, is one and two at Dodger Stadium in his career, including 0 and 1 in the playoffs. He is two and four at AT&T Park. He is one and two in San Diego. And no record at Angel Stadium. So if you put it all together, Wainwright is four and eight in his career in California. And if you include that playoff loss, four and nine. Fastball thrown easily at 89. We were talking about uh, Mike Matheny about how he built a whole bunch of stuff in the Dominican Republic and how he's forever had the foundation for disabled children. Adam Wainwright has done some great things himself. Oh, Ethier got that two and two the count. In fact, last year, after having a marvelous season when Wainwright won 19 games. He spent the offseason in Haiti. If you got that looks like the right knee. Mm. Nancy Patterson out to talk to him. If you're trying to walk it off. Trying to trying to put some weight lifts the right leg turns in on the ball and it hit him right on the right knee and he went down like a folding chair. He loses the fight every time we look at it. And he is going to bite the bullet and hang in there. So two balls and two strikes. Just to finish up the thought on Adam Wainwright after having a great year last year 19 and 9 Adam spent the 2013 offseason building an orphanage and a water project for less fortunate children in Haiti. So people like uh, Matheny and Wainwright and Kershaw so many of them now doing so many wonderful things. All right, Andre says he's ready. Two and two. Three and two. Wainwright walked Gordon opening up the game. He has retired 12 in a row. Coming into this inning, as we had mentioned, Wainwright had only made 44 pitches. And fouled again, only that time he got it off the protective shin guard. Right there. Mm. Lucky he had that on.
Boy, you can beat yourself to death up there at the plate. Andre back up three and two. Squirted to third. Carpenter makes the play. Ethia ran well considering his legs took a beating. One away. So the batter now will be Juan Uribe coming back. When Uribe left the Dodgers, he was hitting 303. He had four home runs, 18 runs batted in. Now he's hitting 301. It's going to take him a while to come back. You don't expect him to come roaring back when the first game he plays in the big leagues, he draws Adam Wainwright. Wainwright has retired 13 in a row, has not allowed a hit. He's allowed just one runner. That was Gordon, whom he walked in the first inning. Off speed, one way out in front of it. And looking in the Dodgers in the battles with Wainwright, Uribe is now three for 14. Ethier in the past had the only Dodger home runs, three of them against Wainwright. He's got to be hurting a little. Meanwhile, Matt Kemp, Yasiel Puig taking it all in. Off speed, Uribe way out in front of it. Third strikeout for Wainwright. By the way, we were talking before about how Wainwright has not done well in California, but don't let that give you the wrong impression. In his career, he is 57 and 33 at home. On the road, 52 and 27. So at home, it's a plus 24. On the road, a plus 25. The point is, he's a dandy wherever he pitches. 0 and 1 to Butera, who popped up. Wainwright. At 6 7, a rather imposing figure on that mound. Fastball in there. 0 oh 2. Coming into the game, he had walked 21 and he had struck out 98. He's got four strikeouts Beckett twice to make it Beckett once, Puig once, Uribe twice. Well, it's not as if he's just overpowering people. When Clayton pitched his gem, remember, he struck out 15. No balls, two strikes. In the dirt, ball one. So Wainwright. One walk, four strikeouts, no hits. Beckett's done a dandy job, and he's drawn a tough opponent. Fouled away. Two hits in the game. Beckett gave up a single to the leadoff man Matt Carpenter and then gave up a single to Johnny Peralta leading off the second inning. He's also walked two. Though we do indeed have an old fashioned pitching duel. One and two. Ground ball to the left of short. Peralta makes the play. So let's face it, 15 in a row retired by Adam Wainwright. And at the end of five, no score.
Oh, how humidity it can be. It is just really tough. Well, on the day in 1966, brutal humidity, Sandy Koufax went the distance, struck out 10, and beat the Braves 2-1. to one. The interesting thing about Sandy, he pitched 323 innings. He had 27 complete games. And by the way, he won 27 and lost nine that year, perspiring or otherwise. Oh, and one to count to Matt Carpenter on a beautiful evening. What a difference from the Atlanta humidity. 72 degrees here when the game started. I think the hottest I've ever experienced, not that it means anything that I experienced it. I'm going to talk about players. We were in Houston the first year that the Astros came into existence. They had a country ballpark and they had a large wooden box for the broadcasting booth. I mean a large wooden box. They had two big holes in the front of the box so Jerry and I could look out and see the game. There were no holes either on the sides or in the back of the box. It was a box and it was brutal. In fact. I understand 150 cases of heat prostration. Patients being carried out of the ballpark. Sandy Koufax pitched one game and Don Drysdale pitched the other. Fouled away. Each lost 15 pounds going nine innings. However, it was basically water. I remember Drysdale took his shoe off and poured water out of it. I mean a lot of water. That was the hottest. And just to complicate the heat. There were huge mosquitoes. And in order to defeat the mosquitoes. They had the sweetest smelling mosquito spray. So add that to the box. I remember telling Jerry because the bridge on the river Kwai was the big movie. And I said to Jerry. Don't give them anything but your name and serial number. <laughs> it was awful. Three and two the count to Matt Carpenter. Sixth inning no score. The night belongs to Beckett and Wainwright on deck Matt Holliday. Shot up the middle but that's where Rojas was. So one away opening up the sixth inning. So Carpenter goes down. That'll bring up Matt Holliday. Holliday grounded into a double play, which in one way is a signature of the Cardinal offense. They have grounded into 72 double plays. The Reds are leading the Giants one to nothing in the fifth inning. And that's ball one. I think the Dodgers are wondering about whether Holiday was in the box or not. Looked like Matt was leaving town, and I know Mattingly's upset on that. And Holiday backs out again. Reds ahead, one nothing, a two out double by Zach Kozart. Remember, Kozart was beamed when the Dodgers were in Cincinnati, but obviously Zach's okay. Two and oh, the count to Matt Holiday. Beckett has given up two singles and he has walked two. He has struck out three. Chopper, there's Rojas backing up for the hop. Gets it over there in plenty of time. Two down in the sixth inning and the batter, Matt Adams. Adams struck out and walked. When the Dodgers come up, their next challenge against Wainwright. Remember, he is not allowed to hit Rojas, Beckett, and Gordon. And I guess it's about that time. Call your friends, email them, text them. There's something going on at Dodger Stadium by the name of Adam Wainwright. Oh, and two.
Kershaw examining his bat. A.J. Ellis chatting with him. Breaking ball in the dirt. Butera picks it up. He out recorded at first. So that'll do it for Adams. The birds go one, two, three. And all of a sudden, Becky now has retired seven in a row. And at the end of five and a half, no score. on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box for the new Jalapeno Ranch or Barbecue Ultimate Cheeseburgers at participating restaurants. And by the Ram 1500 Motor Trends 2014 Truck of the Year and first ever back-to-back -back champion. Bottom of the sixth inning, no score. This is a pitcher's duel. Look at those numbers. Two walks for Beckett, one walk for Wainwright, each with four strikeouts. Beckett with 92 pitches, Wainwright with 60. And, of course, the story right now, Beckett has allowed two hits and Wainwright zero. Miguel Rojas grounded a short in the third inning. Line drive base hit. So that's it. Miguel Rojas, the number eight hitter in the lineup. Rojas batting 237. One good thing, it was clean as a whistle. A bullet into left field. Take another look. Fastball up. And there was no doubt about it. A little disappointed look on Wainwright's face. Not much you can do about that one. So Rojas is singled. No score. Bottom of the six. Beckett has allowed two hits. Wainwright one. Wainwright a Georgia boy drafted by the Braves. That was a dream come true. When he was a little kid. He was wearing Dale Murphy's number three. From the time he was three years old. Beckett. Foul tips it. 0 and 1. <coughs> Beckett checking with Bundy and Lorenzo checking to see if the bunt is on. Beckett has three sacrifices. Carpenter plays in on the grass and Adams ready to push off first base. And one ball and one strike. Beckett again checking. Wainwright was a great athlete growing up. I mean, really a remarkable athlete. He was an all state kicker and wide receiver. Played basketball with Kwame Brown, who was an NBA number one pick. He was an excellent goalie in soccer. And for good measure, he was an avid golfer.
Kwame Brown, in case you don't remember, played for about eight teams in the NBA, including right here for the Lakers. One and one the count. Rojas with the only Dodger hit. Beckett shows bunt. He's going to swing. In fact, he's just going to take two and one. Beckett has four hits this year and three sacrifices. Struck out about half the time. Joe and Bunt. That's a little high. They're going to check did he Bunt? No. So it's a three and one count. Miguel Rojas, a clean as a whistle single to open up matters in the sixth inning. The only hit that Wainwright has allowed up to now. No score. And a strike, three and two. Cardinals play here for four, then. Cleveland comes here for three and the Cardinals go to San Francisco. D Gordon waiting on deck. Three and two. Beckett looks like he's going to try to bunt. No swing away. Little flare coming in a hurry to make the diving catch is Craig. Dodgers almost got away. I'll tell you the truth. Rojas had gone back to the bag. You can see Wainwright say, wow, one of the greatest catches I've ever seen, he just said. Craig came from nowhere, makes the diving catch, and back to first goes Rojas. Wonderful catch by Alan Craig. So a big out, one down, and now D. Gordon coming up. So Alan Craig gets applause from his pitcher. Brief meeting. And the batter now D. Gordon. We're talking about Wainwright's athletic abilities. We well, he said he's an avid golfer because one of his high school's most famous alumnus is Davis Love the third. So Adam would see Davis and learn a little each time they played. Gordon has walked and looped out to Mark Ellis and ball one. D with 40 stolen bases before the All Star break. Maury Wills had 55 stolen bases before the All Star break back in 1965. That was a team that went on to win the World Championship, beating Minnesota in the World Series. One ball, no strikes. As you can see, Wills also had a banner year in 62 with 46 before the break. And Davy Lopes, 36 before the break. Talking about before the break, Wainwright has won 10 this year, four times double fit, uh, double digits before the All Star break. Time at the plate. Wainwright in 2009, 2010, 2013, when he won 19, and this year. You know, Adam missed all of 2011. With Tommy John surgery. A little fly ball back a third down the line. Holiday can't get there. Fly ball single. And the Dodgers have two on with one out. And Yasiel Puig coming up. So each side with two hits. We're taking another look. 
Gordon slices a little fly ball. Holiday deep over towards left center. Can't get there. Trying to show the runner that he could just to make sure Rojas wouldn't try to go beyond second. So two on one out no score sixth inning with Puig and Gonzalez coming up. Yasiel flied to center and struck out. Totals are exactly the same no runs two hits no errors. In on the hands half a swing it'll be a full strike. Yasiel has not had a good swing in his two at bats. Not yet anyway. Kind of hits himself on the head as if they think about it. Oh, and one to Puig. Slow curveball. Oh, and two. It shouldn't be any surprise that we're seeing a terrific pitching duel. We might see a couple because the Dodgers and the Cardinals are tied for first in baseball. The start is the same ERA 3.1. Breaking ball grounded to third down for one. Ellis turns good catch at the end by Matt Adams and it's the Dodgers who hit into the double play. So two hits but nothing to show for it and at the end of six no score. Kershaw's next scheduled home start Sunday and to celebrate the 22nd no hitter in franchise history the Dodgers will be offering a limited amount of twenty two dollar tickets for this game to honor number twenty two. So purchase your tickets at Dodgers dot com slash no hitter. Great moment for a great young pitcher. And then mob. Meanwhile, big curveball, but stayed up. Ball one. Peralta, Molina, and Craig. Two and zero. Oh. No score. Seventh inning. It is indeed push against shove. Beckett versus Wainwright. Foul ball. Two and one. Cardinals had a leadoff single by Matt Carpenter in the first inning, a leadoff single by Johnny Peralta in the second inning, and they've also gotten two walks. Mark Ellis, Matt Carpenter looking on. 
the Dodgers did not have a hit until the sixth. They had the singles by Rojas and Gordon, but Puig hit into the double play and that stopped that. With the no hitter building, Rojas base hit, no doubt about it, line drive single. 73 pitches thrown by Adam Wainwright. Foul ball, Gonzalez under it. Peralta, one away. Yadier Molina flied to center and walked. And a strike, 0 and 1. Molina came into the game hitting 284. Oh, he's hitting 283 right now. Breaking ball off the plate, one and one. Ball two. Molina in March of 2012, he and the Cardinals agreed to a five year deal. So that'll keep Molina. In St. Louis through 17, and there's an option for the sixth year through 2018. Bouncer up the middle behind the bag, speared by Gordon. The throw gets him. What a nice play by D. Gordon, and the Dodgers are fortunate there was not a collision. Because that was a chopper up the middle and Rojas going one way and Gordon the other. There they go like bookends and the hop just went over the sliding Rojas. And for Miguel a good play to slide and get underneath Gordon and then a nice pick by Gonzalez. So Molina retired and we have two down in the seventh inning. So the batter now, Alan Craig, who has grounded to third and struck out. Good breaking ball strike. Owen one. And a fly ball to right. Going back on at his feet. Gets over his head at the wall. Can't make the catch. Crashes into the wall and into second base standing is Craig. So Alan Craig, a long drive to right off the right field wall, right at the bullpen gate. Puig almost throwing a shoe. Take another look. Big full swing. Puig trying, couldn't catch up, then slammed into the gate. Just missed. So a runner at second. Cardinals have had Adams at second base in the fourth inning. Peralta at second base in the second inning. And now with two out, Craig at second base on the double. And here's John Jay. Slow and away, ball one. Three hits for the Cardinals. Jay has flied to left, grounded to second. They're in the bottom of the sixth inning in San Francisco. Reds one, Giants nothing. One and one. Remember when the night started, the Dodgers trailed the Giants by three, and the Cardinals trade Milwaukee by four and a half. Matheny trying to go to the whip. They've been struggling on the road until recently. Cardinals have won eight of the last 12 on the road. Check swing. They're going to look no swing. Chad Fairchild on the line. Two and one to count to John Jay. Check swing.
John Jay got a little bit of help in spring training how to play center field. Two pretty good ones. Jim Edmonds and Willie McGee. And that's going to go by the diving Uribe. Up with it is left fielder Kemp. His throw to the plate is yes, got him. Perfect throw, perfect tag, perfect out. And we'll be heading as Matt Kemp will now think he's the hero for the moment. And of course, on such a close play, Mike Matheny says to the umpires, you better take a look. No score in the seventh inning. The Dodgers feel that that was an out. The throw on the fly. A fine catch by Drew Butera and the tag on Alan Craig. Matheny has gone back to the dugout and it's become an official review. Here it is. Every time they show it, the crowd roars in favor of the out. Butera did a great job of holding on to the ball because he had a short hop to throw and tag. And it was just in the umpire's mind, Vic Carapaza did the tag beat the hand, left hand reaching for home plate. The tag at the ribs. Carapaza looked, saw the ball in the mitt, called him out. But now we'll take the New York review. Mike Matheny had been at the end of some great throws and plays at the plate. Out. So Matt Kemp makes a strong throw to the plate. Alan Craig is nailed. No score. Bottom of the seven. Score the principals Alan Craig and Matt Kemp on the screen but remember Alan Craig made a diving play after the the ball that was hit fielded up the middle by D Gordon then Craig got the double though if Gordon doesn't make that play the Cardinals certainly score in the seventh inning Brian Wilson gets up in the Dodger bullpen, it'll be Gonzalez, Kemp, and Ethier in that order. 
Josh Beckett line drive but right at the second baseman boy that's enough to wear you out line drive into right field. Gonzalez has really been punished by that shift. So one away. Adrian over three and here is Matt Kemp. Take another look. Here's Craig coming. Here comes the throw. Short hop. Butera puts it on him just before he can get his hand at the plate. That's how close it was. So Matt. Great throw. He's 0 for 2. Craig I'm sure still thinking about it in right field. Ball one. When the Cardinals come up in the eighth inning. They have Ellis Wainwright. And then Carpenter. We can also tell you the Reds are leading the Giants two to nothing. Top of the seventh inning. Brandon Phillips hit a home run in the seventh after Pablo Sandoval left runners at the corners in the sixth. So top of the seventh, Reds two, Giants nothing. Slow breaking ball, they'll check, no swing. Josh Beckett, who has turned in a great seven, has also made 107 pitches. So he might be done. We'll see. Remember, in his no hitter, Josh made 128 pitches. Two and two to Kemp. For Josh, in his last game, he made 102 in San Diego. And before that, you have to go back to his no hitter. So 107 is a lot of pitches. He might be done. And strike three called to Matt Kemp. Center fielder number 16, Andre Ethier. Five strikeouts for Adam Wainwright. Andre Ethier has the only home runs by a Dodger against Wainwright, and he has three of them. Andre tonight grounded out to Mark Ellis, grounded out the other way to Matt Carpenter. Strike. Wow. Says Andre. Not going to argue with the plate umpire. The wow will do it. Bounce that one. One ball, one strike. Andre with three home runs on the year and three home runs in his career. Against Wainwright. No score, bottom of the seventh. And a hopper, one handed there by Mark Ellis. That'll do it for the Dodgers, one, two, three. So Wainwright goes through seven in less than a hundred. Beckett goes a hundred and seven. Our guess is Beckett will come out. And at the end of seven, no score.
For the eighth inning to take a look at what's ahead for the Dodgers. You think of the birds. They're here. The Cardinals tomorrow at seven Saturday at four and then Clayton Kershaw Sunday against perhaps Shelby Miller if he's up to it. Miller we understand with a sore back and then Cleveland will be here Monday Tuesday evenings and then Wednesday at noon and following that game the Dodgers then go out on the road to Colorado and Detroit. Brian Wilson came in and picked up the save last night in Kansas City because Kenley Jansen had pitched in four of five games and Wilson got the save and now trying to hold the Cardinals in the eighth. Ellis and Wainwright will be batting and then Carpenter. Wainwright by the way only made 83 pitches in the seven innings. So Wilson starts Ellis with a strike. Wainwright to follow. Another tremendous game for Josh Beckett. Remember we told you in the last six games Beckett's earned run average 1.5 yet three wins three losses. And now tonight a strong seven gives up nothing but nothing in his ledger either. Fastball strike. Ryan Ludwig singled in a run in the seventh inning and the Reds are now leading the Giants three to nothing top of the seventh. One and two. Fouled away. So Beckett wins seven, no runs, four hits, two walks, four strikeouts, two big plays by D. Gordon on a ball hit up the middle, and then Matt Kemp's throw that got Craig at the plate. One and two. Fastball. Mark hitting 198. Came in hitting 202. And he's 0 for 2. Brian Wilson bobblehead. And here he is center stage. Fastball got him on the inside corner. When the Dodgers were in Kansas City last night, they needed some help without Kenley Jansen. And Brian Wilson got a strikeout, and he also got a line drive caught by Van Slyke for the double play. Uh, he was fortunate the line drive was speared by Van Slyke. Of course, the Dodgers in that game were also fortunate there was a balk called against Kansas City and the winning run for the Dodgers came in when A.J. Ellis with the bases loaded was hit by a pitch. Wainwright drives it to right center. It's Ethier and Puig and Puig for the catch. Two out in the Third eighth. Baseman, number 13, Matt, Carpenter. Matt Carpenter coming up led off the ball game with a single to center. Since then, has flied to center and grounded to short. Carpenter in his leadoff role has 28 RBIs. He takes a lot of pitches and he has 12 of his hits on a three and two count. He looks at a strike. He looks at a strike a good 45% of the time. He truly is a leadoff man. There's J.P. Howell just in case. Another strike, another take. 0 and 2.
Carpenter among other things with two strikes 35 of his hits he's had two strikes against him. Fouled away. He's also a remarkable contact hitter. He takes a lot of pitches but anytime he swings the bat he'll make contact at least 87 percent of the time. No balls and two strikes. Carpenter trying to get aboard. You have the home run hitter. Matt Holliday on deck. One and two. Foul back. Amazing isn't it how he makes contact. He had a Tommy John surgery even though he's an infielder. He had the surgery when he was in college at Texas Christian University. He is a Texan. He was born in Sugar Land. His father was a college baseball player. His wife a softball player. And his dad a coach. Check. Did he? Yes. The Carpenter strikes out. Brian Wilson strikes out two out of three. We're heading for the bottom of the eighth inning. No score. A Mazda dealer. MLB TV Premium, number one live streaming sports service, celebrating 12 years. Watch every out of market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. So visit Dodgers.com for details and join the millions of subscribers. Bottom of the eighth inning, no score. The Dodgers have been shut out once at home this year. They have one shut out at home. Here's your rebate who probably bangs the first pitch for a base hit to go one for three. So they get your rebate aboard now Butera Rojas and Wilson do up got a pitch out over the plate and your rebate was on it. So a lead off single. Checking Gutierrez's work. Cardinals looking bunt. Gutierrez does not have a sacrifice. So we'll see if they put one on. And then you have Rojas hitting after him. No score, bottom of the eighth. Big crowd for Brian Wilson bobblehead night, and they're sitting in on it dandy. 
remind you for sure of the NLCS last year. Pitch out. One ball and no strikes. Uribe does not have a stolen base. Wondering about whether he can run or not. Probably having a little fun looking down at Molina. You read a very short lead. The butt is down. Fair ball. The only out is at first. So Gutierrez sacrifices. Uribe at second base. And Rojas coming up. Perfect bunt. Stayed fair. Molina very calmly makes the play. The Miguel Rojas who broke up the no hitter in the sixth inning with a line drive single. Coming up Justin Turner would be on deck to bat for Brian Wilson. No runs four hits for the Cardinals no runs three hits for the Dodgers bottom of the eighth. Wonderful game. Slow and just drops in at 76 strike one. Rojas kind of nodding his head as if saying haha. That was a good pitch. Wayne Wright's only made 87 pitches with one out in the eighth inning. Another slow curveball rolled up the middle a sliding block by Peralta. And he can't make a play infield single Dodgers at first and third with one out and Turner will be coming up. So Peralta saved the run but he makes a block and took himself out of the play. The Rojas chopper up the middle. Nice stop to keep it on the infield but no chance to get him. The so Rojas two for three against Adam Wainwright. Dodgers now the same number of hits no runs and four hits for each side and here is Justin Turner Turner one for four in the past against Adam Wainwright a big at bat now and in the pen can Lee Jansen Turner batting 293 in this crowd of 48,624. Really into it. And ball one. We always do it when there's a runner at third. Wainwright has two wild pitches. Uribe at third. Rojas at first, one out. And a base hit for Justin Turner, and the Dodgers lead one to nothing. Uribe comes in to score. Rojas stops at second. And Derek Lilliquist, the pitching coach, heading for the mound. Chopper through for Turner, who did such a terrific job taking over when Juan Uribe was out. He was hitting 293. And Justin bangs in his 20th RBI. Coming off the bench, he is 6 for 15. In the tough role of being a pinch hitter, and he has six RBI. And of course, Uribe, I think, is still laughing over the fact that they call pitch out when he was at first base. The Uribe is back, and Turner continues to be a vital part of the ball club. Dodgers lead one nothing, and the batter now is Gordon. Two on, one out. D. Gordon walk. Looped out to Ellis and had a fly ball single in the sixth inning. Yeah. 
right. Juan Uribe is back, and that means hijinks in the dugout. Matt Kemp trying to wear the top of his head off. When you see Uribe, the Dodgers come alive. Foul ball, 0 and 2. Hanley Ramirez serving and waiting had the right shoulder and the MRI. He's day to day. Oh and two. In the dirt gets away from Molina and the Dodgers move up to second and third. That will be the third wild pitch charge to Wainwright a frustrated Matheny and the Dodgers now on that curveball that got away trying to pick up an extra run the infield will play up Rojas at third and Turner at second. By the way when we get to the ninth inning. The Cardinals will have Holiday, Adams, Peralta. The numbers two, three, and four hitters. Henley Jansen getting ready. That's off the plate. Two and two to D. One run, five hits for the Dodgers, no runs, four hits for the Cardinals, who had a man thrown out at the plate in the seventh inning. Two and two. Fouled away again. Gordon kind of laughing a little bit. Big grin. I'm not sure where that pitch was. From up here it almost looked like it was close to up to his ear. Take a look. Up there. It was high above the shoulders but not on the ear. Two and two. Wayne Wright. Has won three in a row. Ten wins, three losses coming into this game. Curveball got him. So Gordon comes up empty. That's a huge out. And now here comes Yasiel Kui. Take a look. Big curve. And Gordon didn't come close. Six strikeouts for Wainwright. Yasiel Puig has fly to center, struck out, and hit into a double play. Second and third, two out, eighth inning, one nothing Dodgers. With Holiday, Adams, and Peralta on the horizon. Fastball. Drive him off the plate. One ball and no strikes. Yasiel hitting 310. Puig last year was 3 for 6 against Wainwright. Well, now he's 3 for 9. Fastball fights that off. One and one. Wainwright, who made 83 pitches through seven, but now has made 15 pitches so far here in the eighth. One ball, one strike. And a strike. So he's giving Puig hard stuff. And he's out in front one and two. Another good fastball. So he's clean. He's seen three fastballs. 
you the hitter now you're starting to wonder well wait a minute. When am I going to see the waist curve supposedly. Breaking ball that's it that's when you see it. And in the dirt it was a waste curve but. Justin Turner gets a big base hit to drive in the only run of the game. Holiday Adams Peralta do up. Jansen will be the pitcher. One nothing Dodgers in the night. It figured to be great pitching in the series because both the Cardinals starters and the Dodgers starters had the same earned run average 3.1 the best in baseball. Well we'll see about tomorrow. Hunjin Ryu who goes six innings normally and the Dodgers would like to see him go a little bit more than that. He'll go up against Carlos Martinez. We know that Zach Granke with Ed pitch the Saturday game. And we know Clayton Kershaw will pitch the Sunday game, but the Cardinal pitching staff is scrambled and they're going to have to wait. The chances are reasonably good that Shelby Miller will pitch Sunday against Kershaw if he's up to it. So Granke and Kershaw shoulder to shoulder after seeing the gem turned in by Beckett, the strong inning by Wilson, and now. Kenley Jansen asked to close it. They're in the eighth inning up north. The Reds lead the Giants three to one. So the combination Dodger win, Giant loss, the Giant lead would be two. And remember, just recently, the Giants led by nine. And here is Matt Holiday. Oh, and one. Matt, as usual, going after the first pitch. He's 0 for 3, hit into a double play, fly to center, grounded out. Looking at Kenley Jansen and Matt Holiday. Holiday is 2 for 6 in the past against him. One and one. Adam Wainwright in his eight innings made 100 pitches. Beckett in his seven made 107. And then Wilson made 14 pitches while striking out two of the three in the eighth inning. One and two the count to Matt Holliday. I always remembered it was back in 2011. April the 1st Matt Holliday had an appendectomy. And would you believe April the 10th he scored the winning run in a game. I mean. He is quite an athlete. Of course, he was the batting champion in 2007. One and two. Got him. So Holiday goes 0 for 4. One precious out in the ninth inning. Good fastball at 95 for. 
Kenley Jansen the strikeout pitch of course has been so important plus his limited walks his ratio is five to one fifty five strikeouts and eleven walks slice to left coming up is camp and dives ball is in play he turned his back up here but the third base umpire Chad Fairchild he had the good look so camp couldn't do it Adams gets a flare single to left tying runs aboard Pete Borjos will run for Adams little fly ball camp having to come a long way trapped it came awfully close but no cigar so Peter Borges running for Adams Borges of course formerly with the Angels among other things he has stolen five out of six not hitting much but he does have great wheels so here's Peralta single to center hit back to the box and fouled out to Gonzalez. That squirts behind Butera. I think that shook him up a little bit foul ball. Oh and one to count. Take another look. Foul got him on the right arm or hand or both. Because that's the problem. When you have a runner at first base you can't hide that right hand until the ball is in the glove and that's just when catchers take the beating they have to keep that right hand out there. Oh and one to Peralta. There goes Borges the pitch is low big bounce way late and he came off the bag. Borges is called out by second base umpire Mike Everett. Matheny going out to talk to the umpire. Borges went back to the bag a second time after talking to the plate umpire. They're on the phone as to whether we should have an official review and that's what it's going to be. So the Cardinals naturally had a big review when Craig was tagged out of the plate Borges on the bag and then you can see his leg is off the bag and Rojas apparently got him. Take another look. What a game this is huh. Up comes the foot and the leg and that appears to be the tag and a good look at it by Mike Everett and the out call. The board just thought he has stolen second and he might be the second out instead. Again every time they show it on the screen the crowd roars. You can't see the glove touching the leg. It looks like it is. Let's see about this angle. Well now we can't see anything. Yeah. So they're studying it from every angle. Big play instead of the tying run in scoring position and one out, you have two out and the base is empty. Well, they're waiting and waiting and waiting. That appears to be a tag and the left knee off the bag, but that's not our call. All eyes on the umpires out. So the Cardinals lose two. They lose one at home plate and they lose one at second base. And it's Rojas who got the tag on Borges. Two out. Dodgers lead one to nothing. Peralta up there with a one ball one strike count. Jansen is very easy to run on and Borjos would have had the stolen base easily enough fouled away. In fact in Kenley Jansen's career 
coming into tonight. 29 attempts to steal. 26 of the 29 stole. And it looked like Borges had stolen his 30th. Hope you'll be out here tomorrow night. Martinez and Ryu. A drive to center. Ethiers at the other end of it. And the Dodgers win a thriller. One to nothing. And if the Reds hold on to what they're doing up there at at and Park, the Dodgers will be two games back of San Francisco. The play of the game has to be the seventh inning. Alan Craig had doubled. John Jay is going to get a base hit to left field on a breaking ball. Matt Kemp air mails it to Drew Gutierrez, who makes a catch and tag. And Craig is out at the plate. The Cardinals appealed, official review, and they lost that one. And then they lose the play with Borges in the ninth inning. So it doesn't get much tougher, much closer than this one, as the Dodgers hang on. One run, five hits. And the Cardinals no run five hit. Martinez and Ryu tomorrow night. Hope you'd be out here with us. Till then, we wish you all a very pleasant good evening, everybody.